Usually, before I go shaking my tits for the press, I like to go <laughs> see how the professionals do it. <laughs> Some might say the chief of police has no business in an institution like this. But in fact, it's the quietest and safest place in town. Is that so? You won't run into any reporters, nobody gets into any fights, nobody drinks too much, nobody even raises their voice. The place is owned by an elderly gentleman who knows how to keep things under control. All right. That's why I never invite my friends here. Uh, I wanted to make uh, an exception club. for my 60th birthday, but most of my colleagues are young enough to be my sons, and they'd rather just hire prostitutes. Okay, then. Why stare at some boobs when you can take the whole package for yourself? I guess. But there's none of that in our club. Even looking too long is considered indecent. What? You can get an occasional glimpse, like by accident. The rest of the time you just pretend that you're immersed in conversation. Or just come by for a drink. Why would you... Doesn't mean these gentlemen wouldn't want their bald heads smothered in tits. Okay. It's just that nobody says it out loud. Well, then why not look at the girls? My younger colleagues might call it hypocrisy. It is hypocrisy. I call it the good old-fashioned manners. Good manners and leave the rest unsaid. If you come she to a stripper to place... Her blouse, and we agree not to pay too much attention. The girls are on a quiet prowl, too. They're looking for a way out of their cramped rooms. Maybe make friends with some wealthy patron with a pacemaker and dentures. Everybody uh, wants something. But we have to control ourselves, or we'll all turn into libertines and prostitutes. I Hell, mean, if there weren't any rules, I'd be belching and farting, jumping up on the table, arms <laughs> held high, yelling, Shake it, baby! <laughs> No idea how I got so barbaric. Yeah, I don't either, mate. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to This is the Police. It's your boy, the Infinite Dragon, and I don't know nothing about this game. Okay, do I need to use my mouse? I do not. Alright. Uh, let me just check some stuff real quick. Alright, let's get into this. Day one, July 15th. Uh, go to work? Oh, I probably should have read that. Ah. I should have read that. I, I, didn't, I wasn't. I thought that was work, but uh, when they. That they sat. The newspapers that they sat in front of me was work. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. It would blow Yesterday away? Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons okay. that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my What does that say. mean, though? They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading like all about it voice. in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. This is the first time right. I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. You're losing Not your job. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. Okay. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. What are we doing? I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. Good for you. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? 
You do Shutting it first to them. Tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. What do we do? Blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Good morning. Continue. Yesterday, the mayor's office uh, officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise, or did you know about it in advance? The mayor discussed it with me. This, I've been experiencing this bullshit from the mayor. Uh, what's the difference? The mayor discussed it with me. Mayor uh, Mayor Rogers told me that uh, told me that what what. Mayor Rogers told me that wants a fresh face running uh, Freeburg PD, so no, it didn't come to me as a surprise. I guess that was a sentence. Do you already know the name of your uh, successor? No. Of course not, and I don't think the mayor's office knows who it is either. After the recent corruption uh, corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? I don't know. It sounds possible if he thinks the new office would help him serve the city a little longer. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? No comment. Usually I prefer to answer all of your questions, but in this situation, I've got to say no comment. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Definitely not. That's not possible. Mayor Rogers is true professional, and he makes his decisions carefully. There's no place in our jobs for hard feelings. Thank you. All right, that was a nice interview. I hope I answered something. How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did Jack the press Boyd. conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. Jack sounds like, a uh, Grandpa Max from Ben 10. Then again, I guess it's just like saying all old people sound the same, so... Okay, get our pills. And a smoke. I guess the, I think that's a cigar, so. Get our pills and a cigar. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, right. arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. Whoop. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt. You wearing white and shorts? A white smile of a hungry shark. You can't Mayor see Mayor Rogers smile. enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. Whoa. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. Well, we don't like Mayor the Rogers, movies, then. The villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. <laughs> That's about the only difference. That's crazy. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. This dude reminds me of Norman Osborn. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. I wanted yeah. to smoke, bro. This morning I signed a ban on smoking Kids don't in smoke. all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. Man! Good enough, I won't be here at all. Fair enough. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. You're not going to give me my job back, so what are you doing? Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any sleep. Okay, you came to warn me not to do Sit any vigilante nice work. quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Man, if you don't get out of my face be with this... Hero, then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? Yeah, man. You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. Bet he does at the end of this. Did we just give him my cigar or did... 
my, my boy. 180 days. That's a fire hazard. Jack, that's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. Norman Osborn, if you don't get out of my office. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. I don't think we're going to be calling I'll you, dude. I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Man, screw you, bro. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> 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 Yo! Oh, that was great. All right. All right, Freebrook Tribune. Francis Kendrick could replace Jack Boyd. Uh, head of Culture Department owns a uh, villa in Italy. Cleanness of city streets increased by 20%. What does that mean? How do you measure cleanliness? Jack, you need a new car, man. Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. That's dumb. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts. Well, that's dumb. Talk to your co-workers, man. My deputy, Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. Well, what happened? No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. That's not fair, then. That file I asked for needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Wow. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Well, if you... Uh, this is so sad. Okay, would you like to receive tips about how the game works? Show me what you got. Freeburg PD organizes upcoming work assignments into shifts for today and tomorrow. Every shift, officers respond to crimes in progress, and detectives continue their investigations. You can freely move employees between shifts. All officers and detectives possess several imp important characteristics. Professionalism shows that overall efficiency level of your policemen. A, f a figure around 150 is considered average. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is not entirely reliable. While those who professionalism is considered higher than average are a safe bet, even in a pinch. An individual's level of professionalism may rise and fall over the course of their career. So that's Abrams, and his professionalism is 100, uh, 1,230, and the average is 150. Energy shows how tired your policemen are. The less energy your people have, the less reliable their work, and a policeman who is exhausted might fall asleep at the wheel or make a critical error on the job. Your employees lose one point of energy after working after each working day and restore one point after each day of rest. Your employees don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are hidden from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with any reason they can think of to take the day off, while others like to drink too much. You can only guess about these things, but you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behavior of your employees. Okay, so it's like a strategy game. Okay, so Kochi, Yancy, Purdy. Okay, Subaki's not that reliable. Asano's not that reliable. Alston's not that reliable. Price is not reliable. Mole is, but I think that's a detective. Armstrong is not, and Debrito is not. But that's all I got, so. I probably should have read the profiles. I wasn't paying attention. Ah, jeez. I hope that doesn't come to bite me. The cigar is still there? Okay, good. Move the thing. Okay. 
Responding to the police, responding to the calls is the bread and butter of the police work. You'll need to send your officers to the crime scene before the time expires. A mark on the map shows where, uh, where the call came from. The farther away the destination is from the police station, the longer it will take your officers to travel back and forth. So the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. That's about 15 minutes away, I assume. Um, Nanami Kochi works since July 15th, two days, successful assignment zero, fed assignment zero, political views unknown. Okay. Oh, okay, I understand. Uh, the easiest way to determine how difficult a task might be is to check how many units you're allowed to send on one on the call. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat. Particularly risky missions give you the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. Okay, hit and run. The number of slots is not, not the only thing to consider. Any available information from the location of the crime scene to the presence of the weapons and so on. All of this can tell you how serious each case should be taken. A mission might look simple at first glance, but it turns into a brutal meat grinder. Or a serious call can come in with, uh, with can come in which turns out to be false alarm. Okay, so hit and run. A married couple excited, excited, exited a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot, back over a homeless man who'd be digging through the trash can. The driver jumped out to help, but once he saw that he'd be hit, once he saw that he hit a bum, he got back into the van quickly and drove. All right, so we're gonna put Asano on here. Last picture show theater. A theater manager reports that during a showing of Citizen Kane, Citizen Kane is a great movie. A drunk man attempted to force his way into to the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the threat's security guard. Um, that's not what I wanted. That no, that's not what I wanted. Um. Put Purdy on there. All right. All right. Started to rain, I assume. Whoa. When everything goes well, the police capture the criminals and nobody dies, but the truth is, sometimes the criminals manage to escape. Just try to avoid any dead cops or civilians. Dead cops will hurt your roster, and dead citizens uh, bother the mayor even more than the living ones. Offender escaped. Officer unharmed. Alright, so her reli Asana's reliability did not change, I don't think. What is with this thunder? Officer, uh, offender caught, officer unharmed, civilians unharmed. Awesome. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store and made up with a shotgun and made up with a whole collection of adult movies. Really, adult movies? The criminals fled in the car. You do guys, you guys realize that internet porn is a thing. The criminals fled in the car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The owner is one Janet Brown who lives in the suburbs. Okay, let's put... Let's put uh, Austin and Yancey on there. Actually, let's put Chewbacca on there, and then proceed. A brother and sister uh, clash with each other over their deceased father's will, according to one of the lawyers. We don't dare separate them. Our security guard is off duty tonight. Uh, let's just put Austin on there. I don't know what that uh, what the top there says because I can't read it because my screen's cut off. Ghetto. A passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar and money. 
That is sad. Um, let's put Kochi on there, because I haven't used her. Direct orders. When your cops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask how to handle the situation. Try to deal with whatever comes up, but don't waste all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your plate. The vehicle in question is parked right outside the Brown resident. Uh, Brown residence. The sounds of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through the living room. Uh, they had a shotgun, so the middle one probably isn't a good idea. Turn on the siren and loud speaking and shout out that the house is surrounded. Let's do that one. That sounds fine. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. Cool. Awesome. Offender escaped. Officer unarmed. Whatever. The heck was that? Offender escaped. Officer unharmed. I guess they didn't get him. Alright. If you think you'll need a couple of extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cop to come in and or work overtime, but if they're working flat out, they'll be much more exhausted. Somebody's bound to make a mistake. Uh, no, just end it at. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. He should definitely Slumped retire. Then. Shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. I don't know what that is. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. What happened to this man? Internal affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. Oh. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Okay, so it's Probably kind of sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. I guess. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business. So you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. Okay. And what kind of business are we talking here? Well, exactly. It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Makes sense. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. All right, so these are and, names so we can get more, more cops. Thing, Jack? I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Uh, who's Sand. that? Sandman? Christopher Sandman. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. He's old. Though. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. Bill Cosby. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Wow, okay then. As far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. Well then... The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Interesting. Meanwhile, San pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. Wow. 
Wow. People That's sometimes powerful, mistake dude. his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission. And his whole family oh my paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people. Old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Oh my goodness. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. I don't either. Please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. We might go there, guys. Checkpoint. Day three. All right. Construction of Cinema Museum postponed again. Francis Kendrick's announced his retirement dig. Legendary singer Giornano Crespo comes to Freeburg. Dude, you need a new car. Asking for a day off. When a police officer is too tired to be effective, he will ask for the day off. Sometimes officers request days off even when they're at full strength. Some of the reasons you'll hear are far-fetched, while uh, some are very serious. Don't overindulge your subordinates. But don't antagonize them either. Remember that everyone's got secrets and you've got to make sure these guys have your back. Our house burned down last night and my uh, my elderly father was inside. We need to sign up. Yeah, but come on, Mom. I'm suffering from extreme severe anxiety attack. I can't concentrate on anything. Can I go home? No. In addition to their performance rating, police officers also possess... Uh, possess rank. Employees begin at the lowest rank, and can be elevated in rank or, uh, in rank with one, two, or three stripes. Okay, those are the stripes. Once a uh, once a week, you can pass out stripes and improve the rank of an employee. If you think you, if you think that no one is worthy of uh, of the honors, some week you can postpone the ceremony until later. Insignias won't go out until uh, until your people are ready. Employees of rank not only increase the professionalism, but also learn to com uh, learn to command. Whenever an office or ranking officer is on the scene, his or her colleagues are more likely to perform better than usual. Sometimes the cop gets rank. Sometimes when cops get rank, they start thinking more serious about their service. This can mean less drinking and more time spent on the job. Some of them might even turn out to be dependable. So promoting people is uh, is a good thing. All right, let's start. Freeburg isn't one of those cities where you listen to what listen to what they say or nothing at all. You can always select any song from your uh, from your collection and play it at any time, just like in real life. Well, the life of your grandfather. Let's play some Chopin. Classical music rocks. Learn how to hire and fire cops. Can't do anything. Okay, uh, you have a certain, you have a certain number of paid job openings for which you can hire any available a place applicant. Job slots are separated between officers and detectives. Wanna free up a slot? Time to fire somebody. I'm not firing him. No. If you have a legal grounds for determination, no one will ask any questions. You might need to fire them anyway. Legal legality be damned, but that could land you in additional proceedings, and you and your other staff will be, be become more worried about keeping the jobs that uh, than they are about actually doing their jobs. Another way to free up a slump is to have police officers kill, but that's not really a valid option, right? Yeah, we're not killing anybody. I'm not firing him. Uh, St. Joe's Cathedral. We received a frightened call about the local cathedral this morning. The abbot discovered that someone entered the old uh, cemetery during the during the night. The old Irish tombstone. I'm sorry, I'm reading horribly, by the way, guys, because my mouth is dry. Are painted with satanic symbols, and some have broken into pieces. It seems that there are even marks from a shovel that the abbot would say no more. All right, let's put two 
people on this case. Let's put you and you. All right. Businessman Harley Jones is looking at his window, saw two teenagers scratching offensive slogans at his new car. Man, that's not even that serious. No. No. Really? Really? Come on. Um, suspicious individual. Waitress named Mi um, Mila reports that she's just served a chicken Eddie and a diet cook to a dangerous criminal who she's seen on television just this morning. The culprit is sitting at the window eating a burger. Um, let's put Robins on it. Why? Literally anybody that's under 150 left stiff and their escape. The waitress had mistaken retired officer Frank Nero for the fugitive in question. False alarm. Mr. Boyd, my bouncer stuffed himself with Mexican food again and how and now he can't get off the can. Meantime, meantime the line outside the club is searching around the club. We need someone outside who Uh Well, you should be able to handle that. Oh, an anonymous college came in, a clown carrying balloons at the skinning rink is selling crack to teenagers. Oh my god! Uh... Selling crack to teenagers. Ronald McDonald's doing too much. So I'm chief, but I quit. In one night, I pulled in more cash than I earned a month. Earned in a month working at this dump. Mr. Sorkin said he wouldn't mind taking me on. I just wasn't cut out to be a cop. Thanks for your help, Mr. Boyd. Well, I got the money. Um, I freed up a slot, so let's get this guy. A naked man carrying a canister of gasoline has threatened to set herself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum becomes popular again. Boy, you just crazy. I probably need to handle this uh, a little bit serious, though, because he might, he he's crazy, so he might actually do it. Um, as the police arrive, a clown is seen making balloon animals for the kids. Carefully watch from the stands, take the clown and the ice onto the ice, and round up any witnesses. Cover up in a raincoat and pretend to be an uh, illicit customer. Um, I just say carefully watch him. A friend that caught officers unharmed. Cool, we got him. Is that it? Looks like that's it. Checkpoint! <laughs> Alright guys, we're gonna do one more and that's gonna be uh, an episode. Whenever I'm alone at home, and there's a knock at the door, I always hope it'll be my wife, Laura. She's always forgetting her keys. Oh. Hello, my name is Steve, and you're Jack Boyd, is that right? <laughs> to get to my front door, the Bible boys walked about a mile from the local bus stop, jumping over mud puddles and skirting a couple of landfills. Why did they come Laura doesn't go in for religion either. But according to her, these brave lunatics with their fake smiles deserve at least a minute of attention. No. She patiently listens to them, asks them questions, regales them with pastries, and never once dropping a hint of condescension. When I watch her do it, I've got to admit it gets me. I'd have hugged those boys, sat with them on the porch, and lit up a cigar. But a month after Laura left, all I could do was quietly ask them not to bother me. Yeah. Today I'm a little rougher still. Shut the door in his nose this time. Another couple weeks at this rate and I'll be greeting anyone who comes close with my service pistol pointed towards the sky, ready to fire my warning shots. Yeah. In my life, even the basic stuff never goes like it's supposed to. Normally when a wife is going to leave home, she'll make a scene or at least sit everyone down for a serious conversation. 
But it's... Laura just disappeared. The children in the stories always stand on the side of the mother, but all three of our sons supported me. Well, the in-laws always blame the husband for making their daughter unhappy. But now Sally, Laura's mother, well, we sort of have a pact. Well, this is so cool. The fellow Laura ran off with is young enough to be her son. I hear Ew. he's 30 years old. Of all the possible information a man can know about his wife's lover, I get hit with that. Uh -huh. Fortunately, Laura's mother doesn't like the way it sounds either. Sally figures this guy just thought he'd have some fun with a mature woman, but he'll be back chasing college girls before the year is out. That's horrible. So we have an agreement. Sally's gonna track down Laura and try to reason with her, and we'll arrange a meeting. This man still Meanwhile, loves I'm his supposed wife. to not do anything stupid, which of course means anything at all. It's a crazy situation. I'm the police chief, and the person I'm trusting to find my wife is an old woman armed with a phone book. Aww. But I can't afford to lose Sally as an ally. So for the moment, I had to swallow my pride. This is pretty sad. Hello. Mrs. Markham, this is Boyd. Oh, is there any news? That's what I wanted to ask you. Have you found anything? An address? Phone number? Have you spoken to her? Don't worry, Jack. I've narrowed the range to two suspects. Two Whatever suspects? Like to say at your police building. At my police building, we find people faster than a funny old woman chirping on the phone with my wife's girlfriends. Oh, you're an old man, Jack. Come to your senses. They give us straight out. I know a lady street. just called me but an I've old man. I've got more energy, Jack. Maybe you think I'm a foolish old woman, but I go to my book club, argue with the girls about Byron, and it gives me energy. I talk to my dogs, and it gives me energy. Okay. And you have nothing, Jack. You don't even have a hobby. You got no passion. It's why Laura left you. Oh. Let's not go back into that. Story. Oh, shots fired. My wife, and we can discuss my hobbies later. I'm waiting for your call, and my patience is running thin. You can't force Laura, this old lady to do stop that. Loving me, I'll let you go. I can't expect the impossible from you. Just don't let me die out here, okay? Aww. That was sad. Sean didn't come into work today. Or Shaw, rather. Some friends of mine asked me to help out their animal shelter. They're badly short-staffed. Can I have the day off? You're not a good officer anyway, so yeah, you can. Some friends of mine just asked me to help out their animal shelter because they're barely short-staffed. No. I don't- I can't promote anybody, so... Let's see. Yeah, let's start the day. I don't think we we already listened to Chopin. What is this? Don't you believe? Don't you leave me here, Pierce Pickering Barrel Noise Jazz Band. I like jazz, so let's see what else we got. Uh, Bud meets Bob, Bud Freeman. Uh, that's it. That's all we got. Let's go with the jazz. I've heard this song before. Wow. A member of the city's cleaning crew saw an elderly man approaching some expensive cars in the parking lot carrying a long iron rod. The whole street could hear him shouting, Bastards! Thieves! Bloodsuckers! Um... Let's go with that. It's not that serious. If someone commits a serious crime and flees the scene, the case goes to your detectives. They investigate the crime scene, interview witnesses, and gather whatever information seems pertinent. One of your detectives will be will be lead investigation around the case. You can assign additional detectives to any case. We'll work on the lead. It's the same thing with the cops, except with detectives. You're the most reliable. Uh, I think that's all we need. Did that want me to do something? Wants me to hire a detective. Um, let's hire you. I'm Alabama bound. 
I've heard this song before. I don't know where from though. Uh, gas station surveillance camera recorded a car that's stolen on a stolen vehicles list. Um. Maybe I can get Asano's reputation out. Detectives have interviewed witnesses, collected evidence from the scene, and are pursuing the investigation. The expected results. They drove in a sedan and they sh and they shot like a machine gun. I didn't see much. I only heard a few muffled shots. He got what he deserves. He's been causing trouble for a long time, and recently there's been lots of cursing and carrying on. I don't remember the car, and the neighbor was quiet. I never heard any shots. The police these days don't do nothing. I almost died myself. I went to buy some medicine, and I nearly got hit by some idiot's car. All right, that doesn't help anything. Okay, they finally got, they got their, uh, they did something useful. A racist gang has recently made some trouble in the city. They were capturing black townspeople and beating them to death. They recently sent a message uh, to the local radio station promising to kill all black do doctors, firemen, and police. We don't need any more dead police, especially not, me not mere months before the election. The races are giving more and more, getting, gaining more and more followers, and even some of us didn't support them. You'll have to fire all of your black employees over the next two days to, due to mounting racial tensions. That's crazy. That means I have to fire uh, Austin. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not firing anyone. The driver is nowhere to be seen. Oh, wait for someone to show up. Yeah. Oh! Well, I guess it's okay if a civilian is killed, as long as the officers aren't. Uh, Corey Ramsey, mother of several children, has exposed her concerns about a suspicious man wearing bifocals seated on a bench beside a playground. He's been watching the children for over an hour and has taken several photographs of them. That is creepy, and we need to stop him. Send out Yancey and Tsubaki. Go. Probably only needed Tsubaki there. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Cool. Mr. Boyd, I'm opening for your first martial arts club, and for my first exhibition, I want to hold a sparring match where one of my students takes out the toughest cop. After the fight, I'll teach you, uh, teach your man a few tricks, something that will help him out in the streets. Sure, why not? Why not? It detects percent frames different versions of what might have happened in the crime scene. They get it wrong half the time, but a good cop can separate fact from fiction if they know how to look for case materials. The, the more professional detectives working on an investigation, the better their instincts. To get your suspects, you'll need to figure out... I actually have to figure this out. Man. Uh, you'll need to figure out the true sequence of events at the crime scene using the frames you think, uh, think like... Likely, sometimes with a little guesswork thrown in. If you add it all up, but the sequence fails, you're probably telling the wrong story. 
Alright, let's look at the sequence first. Dude came out, and then he shot at least once. Um, Drug Lord is the name of the... Wow. That's not why I wanted it. Alright, a bartender reports that a couple dancers started fighting over tips and a cat fight broke out on the stage. Uh, let's put some backing on that. A bartender reported that a fight is broken out between a patron and the bar's bouncer. The man, apparently drunk, had climbed into the stage while a local singer was performing and tried to sing it. I'm gonna do what with her? Uh, doesn't look like we need anyone to be arrested, so let's put Austin on that. Chief, I just nailed about uh, nailed the jab a couple. I just nailed the jab a couple times, but he was too fast for me and won the points. I don't really understand all the rules, so I can't keep track of the points very well. But he was all right. He even showed me a few tricks after the match. I got carried away. I got carried away a little and pulled my back. Think I could take the day off? Um, oh, she lost credibility points for that. I think. On the stage, two strippers are going at it, and it's gone beyond arguing to a full-on cat fight. The bouncer is fast asleep, clearly too wasted to handle the situation. The drunken patrons are happily watching the fight. Uh... The strippers continue fighting to listen to the uh, police presence. Step on the stage and try to separate the girls as the bartender for a bucket of cold water to throw at the com combatants. Watch the strippers go at it and don't interfere. Um, we just throw cold water on them. Just trying to separate them is not a good idea. Plus, size, I only I only sent one officer, so maybe the water will work. Eh, it's all right. Really, literally anyone under 150 is trash. We're done here. Checkpoint! Alright guys, that's about it uh, for this episode of This is the Police. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the Dragon Clan, and that's about it. Later! That's the sound of the police. That's the sound of the beast. That's the sound of the police. That's the sound of the beast.